so long, so I'm just super happy to be here. So yeah, let's get this party started. You can see kind of the phase I'm going through in life, which is like a lot of flowers, I like death and life. I don't know, it's just a phase, guys. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. Here's some older work, right? Just to give you a little... Does anybody have some stuff on their hard drive that looks like this? <laughs> it's a mess. I think I'm obviously not showing off here, but, you know, went to art school, did a lot of design work, and pretty bad. I like that one. That's my home page. <laughs> Look how many effects are on my name. All of the effects. All of them. I'm like, that's what makes a good designer. Yeah, I know how to use everything. Virtue. Virtue. Virtuality? I don't know. What was I going to say? I don't know what I was talking about. Either way, it's like I've come a long way in terms of, you know, with art school. Um, you know, I've been pushing pixels and embedding vectors for a while um, on different mediums. But I think over in the past, like, 20, 20 embedding vectors, and now I'm also, like, writing prompt with prompt switches well. That's where we're at today. Who's actually using, who's used some generative AI in terms of, like, Mid-journey, anybody mid-journey? Don't you raise your hand. <laughs> I, no, I, I use mid-journey, you know, concept and try out any new technology. If it hits, I'm like, I'm gonna try it out. I wanna be kind of on the cutting edge rather than trying to play catch up. Or you've used Firefly, so now let's show of hands if you've tried it out and if you're probably aware of it. Awesome. So it's come a long way, it is our generative AI sort of tool, but the key thing is I'll walk you through sort of how Gen AI works at a high level, and we'll try to go as deep as possible. This is like the most text you'll see on any of my slides. But it's basically a playground for AI-assisted creative expression, right? It's like, still coming from you, you're writing the prompt, you're gonna match some things together, using words, not necessarily bending pixels and all that stuff the whole time, you're actually writing a prompt or typing in some text. But firefly.hoodoo.com is where all this technology like hits first, and then it kind of trickles down into the apps. Right? So that's kind of where it ends up. I think it's important to talk about where the stuff comes from. Adobe stock images, right? So what is our database? Our images, like Adobe stock, publicly, uh, public domain content, openly licensed content, content we could use. So that's the idea. It's like we didn't just go out to the internet and steal it and stuff. You know, all my old work out there. I don't know, some, some companies could be, could be saying that. Nonetheless, we want to be as transparent as possible to make it safe for you to use, safe for commercial use. And we're compensating contributors. If it's on Adobe stock, it's not fair for you to be able to be some degenerate content based on your work. So you do get compensated for that. And we'll run through this. Actually, I'm not a huge fan of slides. Let's just get out of there. Let's get into this. Time into Firefly. Firefly.com. You have access to this. A lot of people think, I'll refer back to that homepage, where a lot of people are all about like sort of text to image. That was cute. Let's do it cute. Should we do a cute? Cute kitten profile. I just type that in really fast, and that's what's running right now. Right down here. Keeping it short and sweet and hopefully cute is the idea. Right? So that's what it's generating. It doesn't matter the speed of your computer. Aww. 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 Stop it already. Stop it already. You're so cute. And you're, you're like, not, it breaks my heart now, actually, when I think about it. It's like, it's like, you're not real. <laughs> you're just a bunch of, like, not even a composite, but you've been trained on all these images to make this new thing. Please be real so I can squeeze you. All right? So we'll take that, and typically say, mid-journey, if you use these other tools, it's all about, like, sort of really getting it into prompt writing. How can I manipulate this? Do I do? you know, cinematic, um, hyper-realistic, and I could use those words, type them in here. I'm gonna try this word. I don't even know how to say it correctly. Chat, chat, I'm gonna just butcher it. Chat Roscaro. He, he almost, please say it for me. Quiero oscuro. Hardly can say it, yet alone spell it. That's the hardest part of your job nowadays is spelling. Guess what? I don't need to worry about that. Let's go down to techniques. Go to all of this. This is where the power is. It's like, yeah, I want uh, a, a certain effect. I'm listing out everything. But I don't have to uh, necessarily know how to pronounce it because it's going to be listed over here. But this is where your art education comes into play. Okay, Baroque, I know what that means. 
neo expression, all this art history stuff that I, you know, learned kind of comes back and says, okay, well, now I can take advantage of it. And there it is. There's the, the Kira, Kira Roscoro. <laughs> I'm never going to say it right. So what does it do? It put it down there. I did type it in there, but it just puts it right in there. So the idea is, yeah, just pick from the menus. That's what we do is Adobe builds tools and makes it easy for you to use. And that's what's happening here based on that. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's good. That's the new. That's her new Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> all cats are girls, right? There we go. I mean, amazing. Just one word changes it. That's what all this stuff does. You can start stacking and stacking and stacking and having fun. Here's some other things. There's some other images I have. This is a um, underwater hidden world, top half this mountain range, uh, and out of water. So just mash things together. What I love is like, this has to return something, even though you know you might not know what what to expect. Like I encourage you to challenge it, and that's just what you should do. Don't have to be so literal. But you end up with these gorgeous images. You know, that we can favorite, that we can take and download, might use this later, and kind of move, move on from there. So again, realistic to fantastic. I'm gonna jump into this, I'm gonna do this really fast, because I think this is cool. So here's a case where, yeah, maybe I wanna just kind of do, do a comp for some, a photo shoot that I wanna do. It's like, okay, client, this is what it's gonna kind of look like. I want this set up. Like, you are the art director, it's like you got a promotion. You're not pushing pixels, you're like, I'm art directing now, this is what I want for the product shoot, so you can do that. But I wanna take this to another level because we have this over here. Rather than checking all these boxes and different things, you have the ability to have a reference image, right? You have a gallery right in here, sure. I want my stuff to look unique. You can upload your own image. So if you do have a unique style, upload it and turn it into your style, whether it's a painterly style or whatever. What I'm doing here, I'll drop this in here, is I'm uploading this, this image. So I'm like, oh, let's take this and kind of use this as a texture. And what that dialog said a second ago, you usually get a dialog that says, hey man, is this your, is this, do you have the rights to use it? Because that becomes an issue, right? You don't want other people taking your stuff and stealing your style. And we're keenly aware of that, which is why you have these pop-ups. But that's what I'm doing right now. So sort of, I thought it'd just be kind of fun to make that look. Oh, there you go. Look at that. That's amazing. Look at that. Awesome, based on that one image, and we can go ahead and download it. It applies content credentials to it. So it says, hey, this was made in Firefly. Okay, so that's how fun. I'm gonna slowly segue into it. But I've downloaded it. Um, I can do some other things. I will open this back up. Right in here. This is a playground of a ton of things you can do. Generative fill. Some of you might be aware of generative fill in Photoshop already. Well, I can do that in the browser. In this case, I just want to remove the background. We'll click background, and it removes the background. This is all in the browser. Download, right? Cool, cool for other people. I can imagine you know Photoshop, and I'm like, I don't trust it. I want all the pixels, I'm just being honest. I'm like, no, I got, I'll take it from here. You know, I want all the pixels, I'll cut it out and uh, make it easy on me. So here it is, there's my image. We'll take that and we'll drop it into Photoshop. So, uh, have a couple. This is all in the um, full version of Photoshop. I'll show you in a second why I'm using the beta. But we'll take that and we'll drop that in. I just dropped this in, do the drop in files. It keeps the file name as your layer, which is also the prompt. It might truncate it a little bit, which is why I always favorite my favorites, because then it keeps everything. But I think that's just a good pro tip you can have that uh, like that. I'll do just like a couple other things. Let's just, let's just do this quickly, jump in here. We have our sort of removed background there, and then shrink it down. Because I like this idea of you know taking new technology and making it look like relics. Because the way things are moving so fast, I'm like, geez, all this new stuff is just it's just advancing so fast. So, so that's kind of a commentary I'm working on here. And here's just a ton of other stuff. I'm just kind of turning on all these layers. All right, so I've kind of worked on this. Let's turn on this one. It's getting a little, a little messy. That's okay. We're still working on it. But content credentials are with that image. And they're also in Photoshop. So this is important. I'm going to go with content credentials. Enable content credentials. 
This basically says, um, and let's preview it. I'll show you exactly. I've connected accounts. But it's, let's preview it. It says, hey, look at this. Paul made it. Here's all the social media accounts. He did these various edits to it. And then also right down here, here's the Firefly content that was created. So it's like we're trying to do our best to, to track where things came from. And I want to be honest with people. It's like, this is what I did. This came from AI. I'm not trying to fool anyone. But this is kind of roughly how it's made. So from there, that content is there. That's kind of nice. Let's take that. But I can export it you know, as a JPEG. And right over here, we can take this, you know, and uh, you know, attach it to the file. Some of you are like, oh, you're it's catching metadata. And you're like, wait, I can, I can strip metadata. Or I'll do a screenshot of that image, and it's not going to have the metadata, right? Somebody's laughing a little too hard over there. <laughs> so that's when this comes into play. Publish two content credentials in the cloud. So that gets uploaded to the cloud with the image to, uh, to track it, to reference it back to that image. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll go to verify. And this is what we're doing. It's what other companies are going to do. So we have over 100 companies on board. Um, but this needs to be implemented more widely, just in terms of what's real and what's fake. Oh, by the way, do you see like what YouTube has started flagging videos if they are made with uh, AI? Did you see that? I saw an article literally like yesterday about that. They're going to start flagging them as made with AI, and we're doing the same thing, and we're fully on board. So let's check this. This is contentcredentials.org. I'm in the verify space. Here's my JPEG, and then here's. Here's all the layers. Why they did it horizontally, I have no idea. It's like, oh, okay. But, uh, uh, oh yeah, right here. Search for possible matches. Okay, we'll click right there. So what I did yesterday, or like two days ago, is I did, I published one to using, a content, upload a content credential to the cloud. And it says, oh hey, November 14th, you did. Paul made this, and there's the match. So that's the idea. How is this being tracked? You take a look if you want to get into the weeds about it. It's using Ethereum, finally, good use of blockchain, right? It's got the data everywhere, referencing that image. Don't take my stuff. Look, Paul made this, you know, let's be smart about this stuff. But also, you can even pick this stuff apart. I'll go back to this one. You can strip the image. So, this shows the whole image, but you can start to see kind of how it's built, some of the layers, and we can go back to an early version with just like the, the background. Let's go right here. There's like the background, you know, where I started, and then like everything that was built on top of it. So I just think that's that's really fun. So we are doing our part to track images and really just kind of fix the mess of disinformation that is out there. So you got a question? Go ahead. Uh, yes, you can. And, oh, great, great question. I'm going to show you how to do that. Generating logos with AI. Trust me. What's it, I mean, what is, when it comes to logos, it's so much, it's, it's all brain power. It's less about pushing pixels and more about the idea behind it. And it's like, man, AI is so far from that space. But I will show you what we have in store. Thank you for that. So there that we've done that. We've done all the content credentials. We're kind of went through all this and understand how Firefly is, is being used. And it starts to kind of, I don't know, seep its way. That's not the right word, but we start to implement it and all. The various apps. So, Illustrator, uh, that's Adobe Express, Firefly being a standalone app, a web app, if you will, in Photoshop, and then other places. Like, just taking advantage of this of this technology is the idea. I'm only going to focus on Humble. I've already done Firefly. We'll jump into Illustrator because that's where we make those logos. So, let's take a look at this in Illustrator. Here we are. Here's the brand. Um, I'm going to actually first go over some very important things that you need to know, and I hope you guys appreciate this. This is awesome. Illustrator users in the house, just so I can look at people. I'm like, there we go, just clap it over. This is good. Hopefully, you'll like this, and you hopefully can relate that you'll go out there, you'll find a poster, or a, a post, or whatever out there, and you're like, oh, that's kind of a cool font. Is it a font? Maybe it's hand lettering, but I want something like it. Enter retype. So we go down to retype beta and we'll click Enter. I have that raster image selected. It analyzes it, and it says, oh, this, this very well could be the font right here. And I'm like, oh, that actually does look pretty close. 
And I can find the, oh, I'm really into that R, that M, excuse me, that N, and I can go ahead and favorite it from there if we want to. I'm so into it, let's check this out. Oh, what's this apply? Oh, by the way, I can, I can click let's, so it does every phrase there. It might not do every single letter, it kind of spells it wrong, but it's like, oh, this is cool. You take this and, and favorite that, right? But check this out, let's do uh, apply. What does that mean? Converted this uh, raster image to live text. So let's exit out of that, let's double click, let's party. Come on now, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> All exclamation points. Yeah. I mean, the, the curtain is way off. <laughs> there we go. Whew. Close one. Yeah, there we go. Like, you better fix that or I'm not clapping. So, there we are. But we've been able to, we're able to identify the font, we, we can favorite it. We, you know, we can jump over here and, and apply it to the project we're working on. So, I can try that out. Okay, so that's the idea. Take another example real fast. What about, this is what you do, you might have worked on something, you're like, oh, I want to distort this and make it look magical and flowy. So you gotta outline it, so what do you do? You like duplicate it? It's like, okay, I've gotta make sure I have that live text in there somewhere. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, now I can create outlines. And then, and then you get bold after a while, you're like, okay, I think you know, you've done your manipulations, or whatever, you don't need it anymore, you might delete it. And then you need to know, like a year later, you're like, what the heck, that is? I'm not, I'm not, I don't know all the fonts. And I don't care if you do. Congratulations if you know all the fonts. <laughs> that doesn't impress me that much. Good job. I don't know. Okay, I'll stop. Hit enter. Two, vector content, command Y, vector. Look, it recognizes that font. I should have showed you that, it was a gentry, and gives me all these other options. You're probably wondering what fonts. Well, from Adobe Fonts and from your desktop. So the idea is like, these are all the fonts you can use, all 24,000 plus. We just, it keeps on, the number keeps getting higher and higher, we always have to check. Um, but that's where it's pulling from, and we can find out what that font is. There it is, click apply, click, at, click exit, and now it's back to the live text that, uh, that we had before. Isn't that magical? There we go. Yeah, I think that's just huge. I, I gotta move on, but I just like, oh, this is so nice. Take that, use that for our project. And now we can always kind of know what the font is and convert it back to an actual font type. Don't have a lot of time for pro tips, but I just didn't want it to be like all about new features, although this is muck need to know stuff. Because once you've found the font that you wanted, you have this situation where you have the outline uh, overlapping the letters. So people will outline this. Yeah, you can do that, you can outline it and unify it, use Pathfinder. Um, but I do want to point out, like, your, your best friend in Illustrator is probably the appearance panel. Because what's happening is the stroke is on top of the fill. So all you really need to do is move it underneath. And there you go. Right? So, so nice. I'm glad you guys 